Good morning everybody, Orin Jay here with another War of the Visions video and I'm very excited to do today's video because this is going to be the Terra Masterclass video and of all the Final Fantasy VI units that have come out, Terra is the one I have played the most with, she's the one I've experimented the most with and let me tell you guys, she's not a good unit. She is a great unit. A lot of people in global, I feel like, are misusing her, kind of trying to put like a square-shaped object into a circle-spaced hole by making Terra into something that she's not, when in reality, what she is is so good, you shouldn't try to make her into Setia. And that's what I'm going to use kind of as an example. We'll get there. Anyway, I'm going to talk today about like what skills to use on her, what build to run on her, all of it, espers, vision cards, equipment. I'm going to compare Flame Tongue in particular to magic type swords and tell you when Flame Tongue is better because sometimes it is actually better to use. We're going to get to all that stuff. First, let's start with the most basic thing. What bravery and faith do you run her at? 97, 97. Check. That's easy. Moving on to the next thing. How about main job, sub job? Okay. I think that Paladin subjob is what you run on her in 99% of situations. 99%. It's that good on her. Um, why do I think that? Well, let's explore the Blade Soul subjob. This is one that a lot of people give uh, you know, credence to. They think like maybe this is a pretty good one. And what do you get out of this? Well, you do get some range added to slashing attack type moves from, from her, right? Her main job does have a slashing type move, but it's only range three. From the Blade Soul sub, you get extended range, but... It's not a ton of extended range. It does not overextend what she can do with her magic 100% hit spells. And in fact, I think her best slashing attack is from her main job. So I don't really care too much about missing out on like Slate Wiper, Slate, Slate Wiper, Brave Baker, go words, Magic Buster, got that one right, um, etc. Now, I do think like Sword Song Formation for most units is a pretty good buff and a pretty good thing to use to control early turn movement. However... Uh, if we go into her main job, she has a better version of that right here with focused magic release. This gets upgraded through her EX board to a significant raising of slash attack for allies. Plus, it boosts her magic and slash attack piercing rate for three turns. This is a better buff than what you can get from the Blade Soul buff, in my opinion. So, I just think Blade Soul is just kind of outdone by her main job in the terms of Fire Aga Slash being so dang good, where it's range 3, hits in a line-based AoE, has Ice Eater, so it KOs Ice Units, and has Disable on it. Now, here's the thing. She's still not going to use this very much because Meltdown Plus is so great. Like, Meltdown Plus is the core of Terra. Her main damage skills that she's going to use are Meltdown Plus, Meltdown Plus, sometimes her Limit Break, an occasional Fire August Slash, Sonic Pulsar to, like, last hit a No Evasion unit, and then did I mention Meltdown Plus yet? Because she's going to use this a ton. This getting upgraded in global from three uses to six is one of the better, like, small tweaks that was ever made to a unit, especially considering global's, um obsession with running evasion in the game right now. She crushes evasion units. Look guys, her accuracy sucks. Terra's accuracy is terrible, but her effective accuracy is 100%, as long as you don't build her bad. And now I'm going to talk about the square and circle thing, right? Look, if you, I'm going to go to remove my sword. This is a fully built Terra, by the way, in a PvP group that doesn't really lose. If I go look at her accuracy, it is 45 you're never hitting anything with 45. In fact, with 45 accuracy, she will not try to use any move but her 100% hit move against any of the evasion units you come across, which is exactly what you want. You want to embrace her low accuracy so you don't trick her AI into doing stupid stuff. Here's what I mean. She has a really good move right here. Crescent Riot Blade. This is her limit break. It's a 200% modifier, which is the same modifier as her 100% hit move, but it increases her spirit penetration rate first. So AI will prioritize highest damage move if it has a, a chance of hitting, right? I don't know what that break point is, but if, if the AI thinks it can hit with this, it will try. Here's the, the, the trick. 
She's gonna miss Elena with this. She'll miss a Jaden in an evasion group. Hell, she'll probably miss Engelbert in a full evasion group with this move. Yet don't want her thinking she has a chance of doing it. So when you're building Terra, say, look, she's a she has no luck, basically. She has no accuracy. Embrace that. Don't give her more than you must. <laughs> and just let her use her 100% hit move. It's a 200% modifier. It's AOE. It's so good. So let her be low accuracy. Don't try and build her up with that. It's dumb. And that is a freeing thing, by the way. It is such a pain right now with a unit like Sedia, who's a very good unit. I have to have like a Herculean Waste Blood Boil buff. I have to run like accuracy trust stones on this thing to get her to reliably hit the evasion teams in this game. With Terra, I can go all in for damage. I can just do as much damage as possible. And in fact, her agility base is a little bit low. They did buff that globally with her vision card, getting some agility for her on it. But with trust stones, agility trust stones are a great thing for her. I can give six agility to zombie mask uh, right here, or I could give agility to a different TMR, which would really increase her speed, help her keep up with the current like highest level teams in the game. Alternatively, you could run magic trust stones with her TMR to increase her magic and increase her magic penetration. That's phenomenal. And then for defensive trust stones, just go tankier. Go HP times three with your defensive side to get more HP, more elemental resist. That's the way. For gear, again, I don't have to worry about accuracy. I don't care. She has 100% hit move. I don't want her to have any more accuracy. So... I can run something like a Galmea coat with magic up on it. I could run something that maybe makes her a little bit more tanky if I know she's going to be in a situation where she needs to take damage. In that case, I could come down here and be like, well, maybe I want missile resist and defense, or I want defense and slash resist, or spirit and slash resist. Maybe I want more magic penetration. You just have so much more freedom when building a unit that has 100% hit move than you do with a unit, a DPS unit anyway, in this game that is uh that does not you have to focus on accuracy with Sedia with Terra shoot I'm going full on damage um so when you're setting up her let, let's talk about her support abilities and reaction ability then I'm going to go into the AI portion of this guide here you go blade soul lore this is a really good one agility spirit piercing rate she's going to go faster which overcomes one of her initial weaknesses spirit piercing is going to help all of her damage types inherited power magic up going to help her do more damage. Magic attack resist will help her be a little bit tankier. And look at this HP, 9882. She's very, she's a very thick girl, right? She takes a couple of hits to kill and then has the paladin job to back that up. Well, more on that when we get to the AI part of this guide. Now, if you're going purely anti-physical, Holy Knight's protection is good. If you're going purely anti-magic, Mind Body Unity is good. And if you're going for the build that I still haven't gotten the balls to try yet, you can go Evocation Gauge Boosting. Um, that's a thing. Okay, um, AP Counter. I really like this one a lot. Draining an enemy unit's AP will just neuter them. They just suck after you do this to them. So I really like it when this lands. Alternatively, you could go with Paladin's Guard in a pure anti-physical situation or Preemptive Revenge if you want that like uh, your auto attack. You want to hit them with an attack before they hit you. I don't like that one a lot. And then, um, okay, all right. Let's talk about Paladin Sub Job and let's talk about her AI because my hard suggestion here is just run Paladin Sub. Go with Paladin Sub. It has three moves in it that are super good for her. Sentinel is like but is the worst of the three, but it's still pretty good for her. Immortal Spirit is the best of the three because Courage is really dang good. And then Saintly Healing is sneakily very, very good for her. In fact, let me show you a video clip right here of Saintly Healing in Terra and why I really like it so much. So here we are in the arena map, and this is a situation you can find Terra in, and in fact I think it's a situation she excels in, which isn't a one-on-one -on -one match against an opponent damage dealer. In this case, we are running against a uh, semi-evasion team here with Engelbert, uh, Elena, and Thancred. And Thancred is a high HP, high damage, quasi-evade unit. And you can see that he's getting some good damage in on Terra. Now, she's going to counter with Meltdown, do more damage back to him. And you, you can tell already, like, she's already popped her courage. She's going to win this duel. She is a 
She's a better unit 1v1 against Thancred than Thancred 1v1 is against her, especially with the build I'm running, but that won't stop Thancred from taking her down to like, what, 15% HP? She's gonna melt him down and kill him, but now she's kind of away from the fight. This is where saintly healing becomes a big deal. Like Mott and Setia are over here dealing with Engelbert and Elena, and they're doing a pretty good job, but you gotta be careful with these two, right? We might need, in this case, for our Terra to get back in there and help us. Watch what Terra can do. She can pop saintly healing, 33,640. That is an amazing skill to have on a magic scaling character, which most of your paladins aren't magic scaling. That's gonna let her get back into this fight, and we don't need her, but there was a chance that, yo, know, Elena could have done some dodging right there, and we could have found ourselves in trouble. So that's the power of saintly healing, and why I think it's so valuable of a skill for her to have. She's in kind of a unique place where she can take advantage of some big heals in situations where she needs to find her way back into a fight. Also, if she's high HP right there, she has Sentinel turned on. So if she needs a turn to just move back in towards the enemy, she can pop Sentinel, have a lot of additional defense and spirit in case they can hit her first. So Paladin is not only a great sub job for her for a mortal spirit, which Courage is great, y'all know that. It's also a great job for her to find her way back into a fight, whether she, whether, whether, whether she has taken damage or not. So in my opinion, you're just gonna wanna run Paladin all of the time. Now, when we're talking about this though, we need to learn her AI because what skills to have on and off is very important for her. So we're gonna go to another video right now and I'm gonna talk about her skill priority um, so you can kind of pick what skills you wanna leave on and off. So for this AI guide, I'm gonna use the uh, current, the new Guild Wars map here because it's a spread out map which gives you a lot of options for what you wanna do with your AI on Terra. And in this case, I have left on her focused magic release buff because I want her to run to my tank and cast that to help keep her back, keep her safe, and let my tank gain some distance between her and the group. Now, never mind in this what Setia and Mont's AI are doing, they're not tuned for this fight, but pay attention to Terra because this is a good little class in what her AI will do. She prioritizes that buff first and then goes to her immortal spirit buff. She is not a um, selfish buffer like some units are. If she is in range of a friend, she likes to share her group buff with them, even if, he's, even if she's in slot one and even if that unit does not have initial hate. In some situations on my test, she would be next to Setia and she would share that buff with Setia instead of using like her own TMR or something. One thing to note here is how far down the list of buffs her TMR use gets pushed in many situations. If she's running bells, which I don't recommend running on her um, because she doesn't really have AP problems, she'll prioritize that over her own buffs, but most of the uh, TMR buffs that I want her to use are very low on her priority list. So you need to have things turned on or off, and you can see right here, she's going focused magic release on Setia again instead of casting the zombie Ryryu TMR and I would much rather rather have her casted, have her had casted, that's a fun thing to say, the zombie Ryryu TMR buff right there because now she finds herself in a 1v2 with only courage keeping her alive and it would have been really cool had she had two um, anti-die tricks up her back. Now, she's really strong, she's Terra, so she's gonna go ahead and clean this up without even popping her courage because she's such a great unit. But that was a good highlight, I think, of what her... AI kind of likes to do. So I have the graphic on the screen that shows off um, how her AI works, and it works like this. She's gonna use the group buffs that, her, that are in her kit. She's going to follow that up with a courage buff if she's out of range of the enemy. If she's really close to the enemy and still hasn't cast courage yet, sometimes she will use Sentinel. Um, Sentinel's a very funky move with the AI. If they calculate that like they're in a threat range for sure on the next turn, they'll pop Sentinel a lot of times, so Sentinel's an interesting one, but on a, lo a long map like this, you can count on group buff followed by courage. Now, if I want her to use, like maybe go straight forward towards the enemy, I could turn her group buff off. In that case, what she would do is courage into her trust master buff into um, her physical only shield that she will cast on herself. And then finally into her um, summoning gauge buff. I have not run like a, uh, 
troll summoning build with her yet, although I plan to at some point. That's her AI guide though. So take note of the graphic on the screen, that's how her AI works, and that's how you can kind of control her at the beginning of fights. The only other thing we need to talk about here with her um, build setup is support skills and reaction abilities. Reaction ability, I think AP counter is her best one. Um, draining the enemy's AP is really powerful. Uh, it just, it cripples them in a lot of situations. If you're going purely anti-physical, Paladin's Guard is good. And if you want to do a, uh, like, preemptive hit, you could do preemptive revenge. Now, for her support abilities, it's a little bit less clear. I really like Blade Soul lore for the agility and spirit piercing rate. Her agility is kind of low base, so raising it through this is awesome. And then spirit piercing is very, very good. And when we talk about her weapon that she wants, we'll get more into spirit piercing then. I run this one every time. And then I also really like Inherited Power. This gives her magic up and magic attack resist up, which makes her a little bit more tanky. And she's already has, she has a lot of HP. She has a lot of effective HP. More magic resist is nice, and then more magic will help her do more damage. Your other options here, if you're going purely anti-physical, Holy Knight's Protection is a good option. If you're going purely anti-magic, Mind Body Unity is a good option. And then Maduin's Grace, this is the one for those troll, uh, I call them troll, maybe they're really good. It's the Esper only build where it's Evocation Gauge Acquisition up someday. Someday I'm going to do that fun build. Um, so I like to run Blade Soul Lord and Inherited Power generally. I think those make her a lot stronger and you don't have to worry about your matchup so much. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is Vision Cards and Espers for Terra. And I'm going to start with Espers. Now, when I'm thinking about which Espers I want for Terra, there's two things that I'm thinking about uh, more than anything else. I want to do more damage. So maximum damage, in that case, I really like Bahamut, I really like Igion if I'm mixing in some Slash, Shiva has a nice magic stat on it with a nice amount of agility, and then I'm putting Cactar on her as well for, um, you know, it's a magic-based Esper for good limited cost options. I'm also looking at agility. If you noticed in this group, my Terra's at 101 agility. That's really high for her. And one of the ways you can help boost that is with your Esper. So in that case, I really like Bahamut and Shiva. They both have, you know, 20 for Shiva, 19 for Bahamut particularly. Look, Bahamut's the best one. I just know a lot of people don't have him. An option for is Typhoon for your mages. I don't really like Typhoon on Terra. It's not terrible, but Typhoon, you use that because it has a lot of accuracy on it as well. And I would prefer to save that for maybe somebody else in my group who I give a shit about their accuracy. I don't care about Terra's accuracy. She doesn't need it. Typhoon still has a boatload of magic on it, but at 15 agility, I would rather see Bahamut, Igion maybe if I'm going 15, or Shiva. I'm going to save that accuracy from Typhoon for somebody else. And remember, I don't want to trick Terra into using her limit break on evasion units. I, I've seen it happen too much. And in that case, she can end up losing a 1v1 against Elena or something because she whiffs on her first turn and then... Uh, it's bad. So I just don't like Typhoon as much as maybe some other people do with her. I prefer Bahamut, Shiva, Cactar. Carbuncle's the one I'm building up to try that like troll, you know, Esper summoning build. See if I can get some cool reflex in there. Anyway, focus on magic and agility. And then for nodes, magic attack up, magic stat up, human killer, things of that nature. Okay, vision cards. Now, I think Terra has two very, very good main slot vision card options and those are the fire bros card encounter of heroes because it boosts your magic for your fire units it also boosts accuracy for your group but 13 accuracy is not like too much to put terra into the scary range but it is enough to help your other units in your group that you're stacking accuracy on this also very crucially gives slash attack resistance to your group look Slashing is back. Slashing is back in this game in a way that it hasn't been since the Engelbert Orlando days. There are more mono slash teams running around right now than I have seen in forever. So getting slash resist in a main slot on your vision cards in your group is super valuable. This card also gives her agility, defense, and spirit, which all play into her kit perfectly. Has a lot of magic and HP on it. I really, really like this card on her. Also, it doesn't give her any of that, and it gives her strike attack resist up, which does help her be a little bit tankier, which is nice. Then alternatively, you have her vision card, Omen. This is a fire card. 
Um, let me actually look at this from the main slot so we can see all the stats you get. A lot of HP, AP, which is never a bad thing, and then magic at 138. It also gives fire unit man eater upon magic attack up. This will help her meltdown, but not help her limit break or her slashing attack moves. Spirit up is going to make her tankier, and then missile attack resist up is going to make your whole group tankier against Jadens or Setias or missile units that you find. Terra also will get, um, Fire attack up 10, max HP up, max HP up 5%. All of your fire units would get that for equipping it. Here's the global upgrade to this card for Terra. Magic up 20% and agility up 5%. Nailed it. Beautiful upgrade for her. I love it a lot. My favorite build for her though has been Encounter of Heroes in slot 1 with her vision card in the slub slot. Sub slot. Alternatively, for your main or sub slots, she is a very good unit to hold many of the very good magic based rainbow cards in the game. A couple that I would shout out real quick are going to be Solidus and uh, here, let's look at Solidus. Let me find it. Here it is. Solidus is a great option because it has a lot of magic on it and will give the same slash attack resist 20 to your group that you could get from Encounter of Heroes. Many people don't have Encounter of Heroes. Solidus is a good option there to make your whole group a little bit tankier. It'll also give you Magic Attack up 10, which helps her 100% hit move Meltdown do more damage. Do more damage! We like to do more damage. So I really like this as a main slot option for her. I also really like Black Rose of the Battlefield on her. It's going to give agility up to your whole group. It also gives her some Spirit, Magic, and HP. A very, very good card. Now, is she going to get this? No, she's not going to get this accuracy, but we don't care. We didn't want that anyway. Is she going to get agility up? No, because that's only for Black Rose Helena. Or if you're like the one person who plays regular Helena, it could be for you too. Alternatively, there is Typhoon. This is a good option for her, even though it does give some accuracy. We're not too worried about that. This could help other units in your group, and it's not enough to put her into like what I call that 70 to 80 accuracy danger zone where her AI gets stupid. So it does give a uh, magic and HP up, which is nice. And then luck up. This is probably a better card though to run on another mage than her, but that's the vision card breakdown. That's the Esper breakdown. And that's what I recommend. Focus on magic. Getting her some agility is always nice. And then, uh, you know, some resist slash magic missile. You see those all the time. Okay. Now, I think it's time to talk about swords. Yeah, I think it's time to talk about swords. Particularly here, particularly here what we're going to do is compare her sword, which is a high magic stat with spirit piercing on it, to the flame tongue. Because I've seen flame tongue floated around a lot as a good option for Terra. When I first saw it, I thought that was garbage because the magic stat on it is so low, it's not garbage. It's actually pretty good. Let's go look at it. Okay, so let's start by testing Terra's sword out right here. And I'm going to start by testing it on a low spirit, low slash resist target in Setia. Now, let's look at Setia's stats real quick. Let me show you what I'm talking about. She's only at 10 spirit. That's really low. You're probably not going to see too many units with less spirit than 10. And she only has 25% slash resist. So in a fully built out group, those are pretty low numbers. In this scenario... Terra's Limit Break is doing 5,296 damage with her sword equipped, and her other main DPS move, which is Meltdown Plus, is doing 4,555, so pretty respectable amounts of damage right there. How would those damage numbers change if we switch to the Flame Tongue? Let's find out. Okay, so same group, the only change we're making here, we are switching her sword from it to Flame Tongue right here. This is the, the one that there's the big debate about. Now, here's the thing with Flame Tongue. You're getting Fire Attack up 30, which is going to help all of Terra's attacks, and you're getting Slash Attack up 15, which will help her Limit Break and her Slashing Base attacks. The drawback is there's only 30 magic on the Assault version of this thing. And look, I know there's a magic version of Flame Tongue, in theory, maybe some people have it, but I don't think anybody built that when Flame Tongue was around. I know I sure didn't, and the magic version of it is still bad. So I'm just going to use the assault version to test what these modifiers can do for her. And oh, let me equip it. That would have been a uh, that have been an LOL moment if I didn't actually equip the sword. There we go. It's on now. So my magic goes down from 1564 to 1488. But what does that do to the actual damage numbers against a low spirit, low slash attack resist unit? When you're thinking about those things, the low spirit 
is actually a plus for the flame tongue because it doesn't have spirit pin on it, but it's just as it doesn't have much spirit, we don't care about spirit pin, especially with how much base spirit pin Sedia is bringing. So let's go here. Let's see. How about the limit break? Sedia, how much damage are you taking right there? 5709. It went from 5296 to 5709. That is a significant increase in damage. How about Meltdown? Does that damage go up, even though it's not getting any benefit from the slash attack bonus? Well, yes it does. It goes to 4676. That's up from 4555, so it's over 100 damage more. In that case, both of those are pretty significant upgrades, and that's pretty cool. Okay, now though, we need to test this against a higher spirit, higher slash attack resist unit. So, I'm going to go back to her sword, and we're going to test it on King Ma, a tank. Okay, here we go. Against a higher spirit, high slash re resist unit in Mont, what kind of damage numbers are we seeing? Okay, the limit break is doing 1200 damage. Mont right here has 44 spirit, so I would call that mid to high. You can definitely see higher spirit builds than that, but 44 is low, medium to low end for a tank. However, he does have 80% slash resist, which that is not uncommon for a tank to have right now. There's a lot of slash resist out there, so the limit break only doing 1200 damage. How about though a meltdown? What's that doing to Mont? Well, it's doing 4688. That's pretty good. That's a lot of damage. 4688. We, that's respectable. Okay, now what do those numbers look like though if we switch to the flame tongue? Okay, here we go. Flame tongue now onto Mont. And guess what, guys? The limit break, it's still going to do 1200 damage. The 80 slash resist on Mont just kind of like trumps everything. And the extra slash attack and fire attack up from flame tongue didn't make a difference. So while we saw a difference on it for Setia, the low slash resist, low spirit target, for the higher spirit, high, really high slash resist target, which weapon I was using for the limit break made no difference. But how about Meltdown? This is an interesting one. So if I target Mott with Meltdown, the damage goes to 4432. That is a decrease of what? Oh, a little over 200? So that's being checked by Spirit. In the case of units with medium to high Spirit, it seems like Terra's sword is better than Flame Tongue. However, against units with low Spirit, uh, or your slashing attacks and they have low slash resist, it seems that her sword is the best one. So what conclusion can you draw from this? Well, I'll put it like this. I think there's a lot of different scenarios in this game. There's also other swords we could test out. And a sword like Starlight Elenus has a high amount of magic on it, and it's going to be pretty good for... Um, for Terra. In fact, I bet you would see similar-ish numbers. And even the differences between Flame Tongue and Her Sword were pretty similar. The real thing, like I think the if there's one thing that I would learn from this, if there's one thing I would take away from the tests that I ran with these swords, it's that against a low spirit targets. I think Flame Tongue is gonna give you a lot of damage. I think if you're only hitting low spirit targets, Flame Tongue is the way to go. If you're here hitting higher spirit targets, I would use her sword. So if you have to chew through a tank, um, specifically a tank that's like not Engelbert, because that guy doesn't deal with magic real well no matter what. So if you got to chew through a tank like a Joom or something like that, I'd probably go with more spirit penetration. I think that's going to do you more favors. If you're just hitting squishy targets, Flame Tongue might just be the way to go. There was one test. There's a lot more tests you could run there. Okay, I want to wrap this video up now. It's getting a little bit long. And I'm going to wrap it up by just putting a bow on overall what I think of Terra. I started the video by saying I think she's a great unit, and guess what? By the end of the video, I still think she's a really great unit. She does a lot of damage, has guaranteed hits, so you don't need to worry about accuracy, which frees you up into doing really high damage builds and just watching her run over the current meta in the game. Um, if you're building her TMR with Trust Stones, I highly recommend the Agility Route to help cover one of her weaknesses, or the Magic Route to just further enhance your damage, and then for your Defense Stones, go defensive, right? For your Espers, Bahamut is my favorite. For your main vision card, I like Encounter of Heroes or her vision card with whatever else your group needs in the sub slot, or just, you know, give her both of those in both slots like what I did right there. For skill builds, um, in Magitech Elite, I like, personally, to leave Focus Magic Release 
off because I want my Terra to use her Trustmaster. I have her set up with a Trustmaster Zombie TMR that I like her to use. So by running Paladin Sub and turning this skill off, she will go Courage on turn 1, running at the enemy, and then go Zombie TMR turn 2 while continuing to close the gap and do damage to the uh, units. If you want her to stay back, you can just switch on Focus Magic Release. She will start off by going to your tank or going to whoever's next to her and casting this buff. To accomplish that though, you do need to make sure she has more agility than the unit she's moving to. So keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, I like Blade Soul Lore, Inherited Power, just generically a super strong setup. And then AP Counter is my favorite one there. I leave her Limit Break on. It's great against non-evasion targets. And against evasion targets, if you're not stacking unnecessary accuracy on her, she will skip it and just use Meltdown Plus, which literally melts down the enemy. Boom. Okay, that's my Terra video. Guys, if I miss something, if you have a question, drop those in the comments. This is a long video that I did in like many different takes, which is different for me. I usually try to do videos in one shot. So it's very possible I missed something that you would like to know. Just ask it in the comments section or uh, hit, hit us up on Discord. My Discord link is in the description and I will catch you guys next time. Have a good one. Peace.